Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie Lee and I'm a mixed media artist. Here on my channel, I do time-lapse painting videos. I have a whole series of how to use a light box videos. I talk about art techniques and supplies. And I also have some weird art history and paranormal art videos as well. So if any of that sounds interesting, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And today's video is going to be a light box video with a little extra. So I had a comment on one of my light box videos from a viewer who was asking, could I do a video on using a light box to make a colored pencil drawing? And that is what we are doing today. So thank you to that viewer for asking me to cover this because to be honest, I learned quite a bit from doing this as well. <laughs> I've never actually done a straight colored pencil drawing, and because colored pencil was mentioned specifically, I figured that's what I would go ahead and do. Uh, most of the time when I do use colored pencils, I've started with another medium, hence why I'm a mixed media artist. So I will usually draw out my reference onto my paper and then I will use watercolors most of the time to get down a base layer and then once I've done with the watercolors I will go ahead and use colored pencils to finish things out. Well this time because I was specifically asked to do a colored pencil drawing I decided well I guess we're just gonna go ahead and start with colored pencil. So if you're wanting to learn how to do this as well. Um, you're more than welcome to print out a photo and follow along with me. You can draw the image using your light box and then I will go through the colored pencil portion and tell you how I did that. So really all you're going to need is a light box and a decent piece of art paper. You don't want to have just some cheap paper. So if you can, try to have a fairly decent art paper. I've used papers that you can buy at Walmart and those hold up perfectly well so you don't have to spend a lot of money. Just make sure you're not using like regular printer paper or something like that because this won't really work that well if you're using a very thin paper. Um, and then all you need to do is have a set of colored pencils and I'm using actually a variety of brands. I have Prismacolor, I have Faber-Castell, I have Caran d'Ache Luminance, and I think I even have a couple others thrown in there. So I have a wide mix. Um, I prefer the Prismacolor and the Caran d'Ache, but that doesn't mean that you have to have those. You can use whatever color pencils you either own already or that you feel comfortable purchasing. So I start out doing what I normally do. I take my reference photo, this one I found on unsplash.com, and there's a particular reason I picked this photo. It's because I feel like this is representative of something an artist might want to do. Let's say you have a photograph of your family members, or some friends of yours, or somebody you know well, and you wanted to make an artwork out of that. I feel like this photo is a good representation of those kinds of photos that people would want an artwork made out of um, for their friends or family. So that's why I chose this one. And it's simply just a woman and a little girl who are posed together. And I wanted to do something fairly simple. If you do something like this, you can focus simply on the face or faces in your photo. In this particular tutorial, I did not mess with the background at all, although I could have. And if you have a photo that has a background that you you want to use, you can certainly add it in. I just chose not to because I wanted to focus on the faces and the techniques for doing that here. So really all you need to get started is a photo like I have, your actual pencil, which you can see I have a mechanical pencil here for doing the light box drawing, and then after that's complete we'll be switching over to the colored pencils. So before we get started with the colored pencil part of things, I did want to mention if you've never actually done just a straight colored pencil drawing, it is a very long process. It takes 
patience and quite a bit of time to get it right. So if you're not a patient person or you don't feel like you'll be able to have the time to devote to completing a drawing, that's going to take you several hours at the least. Then you might want to try doing the watercolor first. Um, sometimes that can be a little bit quicker. So I will leave a link to my video where I cover that technique right here. Um, or if you are thinking you want to learn this technique and you're okay with spending a decent amount of time on it and you don't have to do it all at, all at once you can do some and then come back to it a different day or a different time so but as long as you're willing to be patient and take some time to actually do the colored pencil technique then you should be perfectly fine to do this type of drawing also i wanted to mention um, there are several other artists here on youtube who do colored pencil drawings and i've watched their videos many times in the past so i kind of got you know how to do this technique from other artists that are here one of the main ones that i've watched before that has a really good background in doing colored pencil drawings her name is kirsty partridge and she has a youtube channel where she teaches um, colored pencil techniques among many other things. So if you wanted to check her out, she can offer some really great advice on doing colored pencils as well. So here is the drawing. Um, I made it a little bit darker just so you could go ahead and see it. Um, you want to try to get your base drawing as light as possible because you don't want your graphite or your pencil to show through the colored pencil. So the next thing we're going to do is just take our drawing off our light box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my colored pencil drawing using just one color. I chose, um, it's kind of like a dark brown, like a burnt umber or dark brown color. And I'm going to fill in every part of the drawing where there is a dark or shadowy area. So I'm going to just fill in all of the areas where I see shadows in my reference photo. I'm going to fill in, you know, things like eyelids, um, the corners of the mouth, and um, parts of the hair. Anywhere that there's a good shadow, I fill that in first. And the next thing I do is, this is gonna start out as kind of like a monochromatic base to the colored pencil drawing. I grabbed a pencil, mine is actually a Prismacolor like pumpkin pencil, but looking at my reference photo, the tones in the skin really seem to match this pencil that I have. So what I did then is I went through and not the darkest parts of my drawing, but maybe the next darkest parts I filled in with this pumpkin color. And so I'm going through my drawing and I'm just doing those areas, the darkest and that lighter, more skin tone. Now I am
going to tell you right off the bat, at the beginning of your drawing, you do not want to press down hard with your pencil. You want to hold your pencil back further on the pencil, kind of turn it on its side, and you want to do the color that way. That way you're getting a really light layer of color. You do not want to do a dark layer of color to start with because then you will not be able to get the full effect of doing the colored pencil technique. I'm going through here and I'm adding in some yellow tones. Um, I think I had like a yellow ochre pencil and a lighter and so I added those tones to kind of like the mid areas of the skin. You don't have to color in all of the skin. You can leave some parts lighter but the parts that you are coloring in you can layer over with your colored pencil colors. In fact, you should be. So I layered over some of the dark brown with some of that pumpkin color. I layered over the pumpkin color with some of the yellow color. And now I have this more reddish sepia tone for the little girl. I layered over some of the spots on her skin with that color. So what you're doing is you're building up very light layers of many different colors for the skin tones on your portrait. So you can see I'm going through here and I'm just adding more color on areas like this where it's not skin, that little strap of her maybe bathing suit or a little tank top. I did do that fairly dark to start with because I know that that's just going to be solid red. One thing you might wonder about if you're new to colored pencil drawing is how do I know what colors to choose for my drawing? What I did for my own drawing is I looked at my reference photo and I looked at the skin on both of the faces. Now one person here, the woman, her skin tone was quite different from the little girl's. The little girl had more of like a like a browner skin tone and then the lady had more of like a yellowy skin tone. However, another thing I noticed was that the skin tone on the woman on the side of her face that was closest to the little girl, she had a very red reflection. I'm assuming off this red top that the little girl is wearing. So there was a lot of red in her face on that side. So in order to pick the colors to do the skin tones, I went through my colored pencils and I found the colors that I thought most closely matched those colors I saw in their skin. So you saw a little bit earlier, I used a dark brown pencil to start with to fill in the darker shaded areas. And then I started going over the skin very lightly, holding my pencil very far back to put layers of skin color in the areas that needed it. I started with that pumpkin color because it looked to me like in the reference photo that pumpkin color was in both of their skin, um, in the little girl more so than the woman, but they both had it. So I started with that, and then on the woman's skin I added the yellow ochre, so basically just like a warm yellow color um, to do areas of her skin, but I did not really see much of that color in the little girl's skin, so what I did is I used more of the yellow color on the woman, uh, especially on the side of her face facing away from the little girl because that's where I saw it in the reference photo. And I did use a little bit of it in the girl's skin just to kind of hold the two of them together in the drawing. I picked like a kind of like a sepia color, um, like a lighter brown color for some areas. Now all of the colors I used at the beginning were more of a darker to mid-tone. I'm not going to use most of my lighter colors until I've gotten all those darker areas in. So like the the shadows and the dark areas on the face and you know behind their necks and stuff like that. And then after that, you know, after I have all those darker colors down, I can start putting some lighter colors down as well. You can see now I'm using a red, it's actually a true red pencil to put those red tones in the woman's face. And right now you might think, okay, that looks a little bit crazy, but later on when I've layered more colors on top of that red, it just, it will make it look like part of her skin tone and it won't be quite as red. So all I'm doing here is I'm just taking the different 
colored pencils that I've picked out for their skin and I'm layering them on top of each other. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the woman's hair. Her hair was in the photo a dark brown color, but it looked like she had had red hair color kind of added to it so you could see some of the dark brown but some of the areas of her hair were very bright red so I just went through her hair and I added the red to the areas where it really showed up in the photo and I added the dark brown pretty much around the the hairline and the top of her head where her hair was growing out that's where the dark brown was And then she also, this might be scary to some people to do this part, she has some hair strands blowing across her face. Now this is a point where if you put the hair strands in and they don't look right, it can really distract from the rest of the drawing. So the way I put her hair strands that are blowing across her face, I took a very sharp pencil and I put a very thin line. The hair strands that were blowing were kind of a mixture of the red and the dark brown. So I just did really thin strands of the dark brown and the red across her face and I just kind of left them at that. I'll kind of work with them a little more here later on in the drawing. but you don't wanna go heavy with those hair strands, otherwise they're going to kind of take over her whole face and be very distracting. So you wanna keep it very, very light. Don't press down too hard on those hair strands. If you feel like your, your drawing has something like this and you feel like you're not sure if you'll be able to do it so that it looks right, I mean, you are the artist. You can feel free to leave those out if you want to. That's totally up to you. If you want to try it, then you can also, you know, go ahead, start real light. Don't press down hard. Just get the strands themselves in place and then you can kind of work with it later like I do in this drawing here. So I'm just going through and I'm trying to fill in all areas of the drawing with color. The reason why I'm holding my pencil so far back is because I want to give light layers of color to start with and I want to make sure I fill in all areas of the paper with different layers of my colored pencil. So you can see now I'm working on her sunglasses. They have the sky reflected in the lens so I just did a darker blue where it showed the darker blue 
and then I just went over it with some lighter blue and at the end when I kind of blend it all together it will start to look very smooth right now you can still see the little white parts of the paper coming through but that's what this technique does if you put down these many layers that you see me putting on over time they're going to fill up the page with colored pencil pigment and then at the very end, I'm going to use my lighter colors to go over those areas, pressing harder to blend everything underneath together to make it very smooth. And that's the, that's the kind of magic of this technique, the way it works when it works out, is that all of that graininess that you see disappears as long as you have enough layers of light colored pencil, not light color, but light pressure underneath your final layers. So here what I'm doing is I'm just going through the drawing and I'm making sure all areas have the colors that are needed. Um, I'm adding in some more dark to the hair. I'm working on the eyes and the under eyes. It's probably helpful to keep your reference photo right beside your actual drawing so that way you can kind of look at your reference photo as you're working to make sure you've got all the areas of color that you see in the photo also in your drawing. So if you notice that you know an area that you've worked on before now looks too light you can add more layers of color to make it darker because that does happen as you work as you you know add color to other areas of your drawing some areas that you have already done kind of fade a little bit because they're not as prominent they've kind of all blended together with the rest of the drawing so you can add more dark tones to darken some areas add more of the shadow areas add more color to make something brighter. Um, you, you can do all of that stuff as you're looking at your photo to see what areas of your drawing need a little work or need a little more pencil and what ones are fine to leave alone. I added some more red and some darkness to her hair. I even used an orange pencil to kind of go over some of the red areas because she has some lighter areas in her hair. So that orange color kind of helped blend with the red a little bit. The little girl's hair is very different from the lady's hair in this drawing. Um, her hair is very thick and very wavy and so I treated her hair quite different than I did with the lady's hair. The lady has very, seems like very straight, not quite as thick hair. You can see now I'm adding more layers to those sunglasses. It actually took several layers of just doing dark blue, light blue over one another to achieve the layers of color that I needed. And now what I did is I took a very light pencil. This is kind of like a, it's a white blue color. And I pressed a little harder over those areas with that. And then I used a little bit of the white to blend all the colors in the sunglasses together. So it looks very smooth, like a mirrored lens would look. Like I was talking about earlier, how you can go back through and add some darkness now that you've got color everywhere. I darkened her nostrils. I'm darkening the lips where there's a little bit of darkness there. I added some visible strands of hair to the top part of her forehead. Now I have more of like a peachy or flesh colored pencil and a white pencil, and I'm using those to go over the layers on her face. I still have my pencil turned to the side, but I press down a little bit harder. And what that does is it kind of warms up the pencil underneath so it starts to blend all of those colors together into one smooth layer. 
So I'm gonna work on the lady's face first and that's what I'm doing. I'm alternating between the darker colors just to add anything to areas that might be lacking. I'm using the white and the flesh colored pencils to go over areas and you can go over all the areas of the face with that. And as you press down with those lighter colored pencils, you'll see that what's happening underneath is that the colors you use are much more smooth and blended than they were. It's starting to lose that grainy look where you can see the little white bits of the paper showing through and it's looking much more smooth, almost, almost like actual skin would look. This process takes a little bit of time. You're going through with many colors over and over again. That's why I said it takes patience to do this technique because at certain points you feel like, you know, this is gonna take me forever to do this to get it looking right. But once you reach a certain point where you have enough layers of color on your paper and you start to blend together with your lighter colored pencils, so if you have, if you're doing skin tone, it would help if you have a pencil that has peach or flesh tones or like a sepia tone for darker skin. Um, the white, if you use that all over, will kind of give a white cast. So you try to only use the white in the highlight areas if possible. Um, going through and adding some detail to the lady's face, I added her eyelashes. I used a black colored pencil, very sharp, to put the clumps of eyelashes in. I added individual hairs in her eyebrows. I went through that area in the shadow between her face and the little girl's hair, and I just made sure that there was no white in that area because that's a very dark shaded area. And then I went over it with a reddish color because the shadows are a little bit warm. And then I went over it with a lighter pencil to kind of blend that shadowed area together. Now I'm going through on the little girl's face and I have a few different colors that I'm using here than I did on the woman because the little girl's skin tone is a little bit different. I'm using um, almost like a pink pencil to give her some blush to her skin. I was using that pumpkin pencil a little bit more because her shadowy areas on her face are much more orange and the lady's face are much more yellow. So I'm just going through like I did on the woman. I am darkening areas that need darkened. I'm adding color to certain areas that look maybe washed out or not as colorful. I added some red to her lips and then I went over it with the lighter color pencil to blend her lips together. On both of their teeth, um, the teeth are not actually white. On the ladies' teeth, I did a peachy or flesh colored pencil to kind of do a very light layer on her teeth and then um, a little bit of like pink at the top because where the gums are, it's gonna kind of show on that area. And then in between the teeth, you don't have to outline the teeth like little chiclets. What you wanna do is add just a few lines to define where the teeth are. And I used a like a darker reddish pencil to do that. And on the little girl's teeth, I did something similar, but I used some different colored pencils because her mouth is a slightly different color than the ladies. So I did the same thing on the little girl that I did on the lady. I went through and I did all of the skin colors. Once I had all of her skin tone areas where I thought they had as much color as they needed, then I started going over her face with the lighter flesh colored pencil and the white pencil as well. And then I started working on this side of the hair of the little girl, which I just put in chunks of color using my colored pencils. The way her hair was reflected was she had some really dark areas because she has very thick hair so I put in the my darkest brown and then she had some reddish areas and some very yellowy blonde on top and then I went over it with some white pencils to give those lightest strands and then there is one thing I did at the very end which is why I showed the final photo is when I looked at the little girl's face I felt like her nose needed a little bit more definition at the top between her eyes so I took some of the peachy pink pencil that I had and I added a little more color there on either side of the nose so it wasn't quite so bright and it helped define the top of her nose a little bit so it didn't look so wide and that's pretty much 
the end of the drawing. Um, at that point, I considered it finished and added my signature to the drawing, and I did not complete any sort of background. So the main important thing for doing the colored pencil drawing, which was working on their, you know, their actual subject of the drawing, which was the two figures, the lady and the little girl. Um, one thing that I did do towards the end that kind of added a little bit to the realism of the drawing was on the lady. I took a very sharp pencil in her hair colors and I added some wispy strands kind of outside of the bulk of her hair. So it looks like she has a few kind of frizzy strands because real hair looks like that. And then I did that a little bit on the girl's hair as well. Just a few little wispy strands of hair outside of the main bulky part of the hair to give that look of actual hair because no Nobody's hair is completely smooth and when you're looking at a drawing like this it adds to the realistic look of the drawing to have hair that looks like hair would actually behave so that's one thing I did there. And so that is the completed lightbox drawing to colored pencil artwork. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, please subscribe if you are not subscribed. Ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I do take suggestions from people who watch the videos and are having questions and want me to cover something in the video. So if that's you, go ahead and leave me a comment and I will take a look and see if I can come up with a video for that. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on my channel. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again soon in my next video. Bye-bye.